Hello, and welcome to episode 20 of The More You Know, a podcast about Florida State University. I'm your host, Mike, Director of Social Media for Florida State's Office of Admissions. Thanks for listening. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find subscription links on our website, admissions.fsu.edu slash podcast. Before we get into this week's episode, I just want to let all our listeners know that Florida State will be at the NACAC Virtual College Fair on September 13th, 2020. You can find a registration link for the show on our new Linktree profile at linktr.ee slash FSU admissions. We hope to see you there. This week's guests join us from Union Productions and Club Down Under, the division of the Oglesby Student Union that plans and hosts all sorts of events, including concerts, comedians, lecture speakers, on-campus fairs, and more. Joining us today are Assistant Director Christina Schaefer and two current Union Productions students, Daniel Roschberger and Abby Williams. We discuss the numerous events put on by Union Productions, share some stories about some of our favorite shows, get into how Union Productions has added to the college experience, and explain how to get involved. And now, on to the interview. I'm here with a panel of guests from Club Down Under and Union Productions. I'll just let them introduce themselves, uh, but I'll just say we can start with Christina. Hey, everyone. I'm Christina Schaefer Crawford. I'm the assistant director in the Oglesby Union, and I get to advise Club Down Under and Union Productions. Hey, guys. uh, I'm Daniel Rauschberger. I'm our assistant marketing director at Union Productions Club Down Under, and uh, currently I'm a junior uh, right here at FSU. Hi, I'm Abby Williams. I am a senior. I'm also a PR assistant at CDU. And yeah, this is my second year working with Club Down Under. And Daniel and I co-host our podcast, Dialogue Down Under. Um, And yeah, I man the Instagram. Okay, so I always like to start off the show when I've got students on the show, which is really every episode now since I love having students on the show. Um, I want to know why did you guys decide to attend Florida State? That's actually a really good question. Um, so going through high school, I actually, uh, I kind of came through this, uh, debate on what I wanted to do. And, uh, my dad went to Florida state. My sister went to Florida state. Uh, so when I got in, I was like, Oh, you know, I, I guess I'm going to Florida state. So when I came here, um, it was kind of like a family tradition, you can almost say. Uh, so I, I was kind of led down a path of being an FSU fan. So it seemed like a, you know, a pretty clear choice for me when uh, I got admitted. Yeah, those those sort of stories are always fun, like where the generations of family members go to the university and there's a lot of spirit surrounding it. Um, I'm a first generation student, so I kind of had a lot of free reign going to university and f- as far as like what choices. Um, but I wanted to stay in state. It was just the most feasible for me. And I fell in love with the campus when I toured it my junior year. I feel like everyone who goes to FSU can agree it's one of the most stunning places. And it's far enough away from Miami. And I know Daniel can agree because that's where we're both from, that it's far enough away that uh, we feel like we're not in Florida, or at least our version of Florida. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a different, different version of Florida. It really does feel like you're in a totally different state up here. I mean, we're like 20 minutes from the Georgia border. So you really kind of are. (laughs) Yeah. So was there something that surprised you guys about Florida state after you got here? Um, I think, I think the amount of opportunities, uh, that, uh, you know, is available. I mean, coming in, I was a nutrition major. Um, you want, you know, you want to talk about doing a 180 uh, when you get to college, people switching majors. I came in as a nutrition major. I was pre-med and I stumbled across, uh, union productions club down under and a bunch of other things like ad club and, and whatnot. So when I got here, I was like blown away. I mean, there's so much to do. And, you know, also the student body is, you know, so diverse and the organizations you can join that when I got here, my mind, my eyes were open. So, you know, joining all of these different things, I got to learn, you know, how involved you could really be. And that, you know, that's something that I didn't expect as much. I expected there to be clubs, um, you know, but I I didn't expect there to be, you know, so many opportunities, especially like, especially the involvement fair and things like that. Something that just happened recently. Uh, I think it's great for students to see that, you know, uh, to see how they can, uh, you know, be involved and really find what they like to do. Like, like I said, coming in, I was a nutrition major and joining club down under and UP. Um, I did a 180. I, I, I applied as an advertising major and now I'm actually doing what I love and I get to be part of organizations that, you know, just help me move forward in that. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with the diversity of options that we have here as students. I think like one thing that surprised me was like how interesting it was making like friends and uh, establishing a sense of community because I really found my sense of community through Club Down Under. But I, I joined that my junior year. So um, I, tr- I had a bunch of different things that I was involved in leading up to, you know, joining Club Down Under my, my junior year. I was involved with Peace Jam and a lot of other um, outlets at the Center for Leadership and Social Change. Um, I did Power of We. I did a bunch of other um, outlets on campus. But my like real strong sense of community definitely came from Club Down Under. And I think I was just really surprised at how like welcoming all the students and staff were. So yeah, that was. I think that's something that I hear from a lot of students and something that I definitely experienced myself as well as that, you know, FSU is a big school with about 30,000 something undergrads, but there seems to be like a niche for everyone. And once you kind of you take, sometimes it takes a little searching, but once you find it and settle in, it'll really like completely change your educational experience. I know that's, that's what I experienced at the student life center. It just changed everything for me when I was an FSU student. I totally agree in that it takes a lot of time. And I think when you come in as a freshman, there's a lot of these like misconceptions that you're immediately going to come in and find your little niche in, in, or sense of community. And I think in that soul searching that you end up finding at the end of your experience at university, the place that like is the best option for you. Yeah, it's almost like dating in a weird way. You have to like date all these <laughs> these organizations and figure out which one you fit the best with. Swipe right or left. Well, that's a great <laughs> idea. We should do that for the next involvement fair. <laughs> totally. I would super like Club Down Under. Yeah. We don't we don't do many kind of like those kind of events in admissions, so feel free to steal that idea. Uh, so let's kind of jump into to Union Productions and uh, and Club Down Under. Um, I'm wondering if maybe Christina or one of our students can give us just a little bit of history of of what Club Down Under and Union Productions are. I'm happy for the students to take the lead because the biggest thing about Club Down Under's history is that it's run solely by students and created for students. So I would love for them to give their little piece of it. Daniel, or I could go. Um, So Club Down Under is our student entertainment organization on campus. It's had a multitude of different names that I can't think of right now, but um, basically we man the lectures, events, concerts, all free for students. And I think, oh, geez, I'm going to get in trouble for not knowing the year of our (laughs) manifestation. It's like 73. Oh, so close. 71. Okay. I I was close. I knew it was sometime in the seventies. But yeah, it's always been run by students for students. Christina, I'm pretty sure you've, you were in Club Down Under when you were at university. I tried to be in Club Down Under. That is the like cool story about me being in Club (laughs) Down Under is that I really wanted to be in Club Down Under, but back in the day, it was like the super cool kids club. Um, And I thought I was a cool kid. Well, now I am. Thank you so much. Uh, (laughs) Back then, I was a pretty super nerd back in the day. So um, I don't know, but I I loved it. I love what Club Down Under did back in the day when I was an undergrad. So I too went to Florida State for undergrad and fell in love with Club Down Under because it was it was housed in the um, union. So if folks don't already know that the union's going through a rebuild right now. And so there's currently nothing there but just steel, um, which is exciting. But we will have a new Club Down Under that will be underground. So actually Club Down Under and a little history about why we're called Club Down Under is that back in the day, we used to be in the basement of the union. Um, It was accessible to students. There used to be a small cafe down there. Um, It was called like the Rat Skeller or something like that. It was kind of like your beatnik-y, vibey, you know, back in the 70s, 60s, you know, anti-man stuff, I guess you could say. (laughs) And um, so there was just like this place that students could chill, read poetry, you know, do some music. Um, and it just kind of grew from there. And that's why, it, and then it grew to be Club Down Under because it was underneath the, in the basement of the union. And then it moved to its second home um, next to what used to be the Chili's slash um, <laughs> community table slash Four Rivers. So we were like squished in between that space right by the staircase in the old union. And we um, lived there in, beginning in the 70s. So that's kind of like when we really took hold of being clubbed down under and having more of an identity as a venue on campus. 
And before that, it used to be a Whataburger. And before a Whataburger, it was the bookstore for the university. So that space had been through a lot of iterations, but that's We've kind come of where a long we came way. from. We have come a, a super long way. So <laughs> it's great. And we're super excited about the new club to come. Yeah, everyone's really looking forward to the new club. I know there's going to be so I, I feel like maybe a little magic lost from the old building, but I feel like we can rebuild some new magic in the new club down under. Um, So you guys put on like just an absolute ton of shows. How many shows does Union Productions put on a year? Well, really, we we aim to put in uh, put on shows. Uh, is it Thurs- Thursday, Friday and Saturday? Um, so we have events every Thursday, Friday and Saturday um, in terms of concerts and other events that we do. Uh, I mean, I guess it ranges. Right. Um, there is no exact number, but really, we try to aim for those days to uh, give students options to come if they don't want to. You know, it, uh, it's notorious that Tallahassee, you know, is a is a city, you know, it's a college town. People go out. But, you know, we do put on things for people that just want to, like, hang out also. You know, we put on a lot a lot of music events. And like we said, because we don't have uh, a venue, an actual club down under, um, we try to, you know, branch out to other places on campus as well. Um, so you really, if, if you want to come to an event, there is going to be an event every week. Um, with this being said, you know, of course, right now we're all online. Uh, it is kind of hard with the whole pandemic, but we're still shooting to have online events. Uh, you know, whether that be asynchronous or synchronous events, you can definitely uh, for this year, you know, come and catch a CDU event. I would say throughout the semester, we have about 70 to a hundred events from concerts, lectures, and then, uh, we do events on Landis and, and they're mostly themed. Um, but yeah, and they're all, you know, manifested from our student brains in collaboration with the advisors. So I, I think it's, it's great that we're able to, um, have so many opportunities and things for people to attend throughout the semester. So what were your guys, uh, what were your impressions of Union Productions when you first walked in? I know there was probably some sort of impression, like when you walked into the physical, no longer existing club down under, but what was your kind of first impression when you, when you went to a, a Union Productions event before you joined up? My first event was a concert my freshman year of college, and uh, it was Hippocampus. They came in October of 2017, and that that was just one of the most fabulous show experiences I have ever had, without a doubt. Like from all the, the paid concerts I've done, um, I was a little freshman, and I was the first one of all my friends to finish their classes. So I was waiting out front. I was one of the fi- the first five people to be out front to get a spot into the venue because I knew it was a, a relatively high profile event. Um, and I just I remember the staff being so cool and welcoming and just like kind. Um, and just the, the aura, I guess, of that venue to talk about that is, is just like, just so vibey. And I know that's just so modern of me to say, it was just like absolute vibes when you went to, entered into that venue. Um, and the concert itself was so professionally done because, um, the production aspect is also run by, um, our, our team at CDU. So, um, to think that the lighting and mixing and mastering in the sound booth is all done by students too, was just an amazing thing to, you know, be a part of as an audience member and student. So, um, and then the first experience that I had with staff, like truly with staff was at our interviews that we usually hold each fall for volunteering positions. Oh my God. It was just, I, felt loved and wanted and like part of the organization before I was even offered that volunteer position last year. It was really fabulous. And I have left those experiences with some of my closest friends I've made in college. So all positive reactions to say the least. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Actually, my, my, my story for CD is kind of funny. I actually never went to an event before I I interviewed. Um, I, I know, I know. I'm getting the shame fingers right now. But I, I, I heard about Club Down Under a bit, and then I remember talking to some friends, and they told me all about Club Down Under and how it's all student run and how they put on these great events. And um, I love, I love contributing to things that you know can grow and you can make your own. You can be a part of it. So when I heard about, it, I was like, I need to be part of this. I need to come, you know, and at least interview for a position. And so when I did. Um, I interviewed for the hospitality department. So going off what Abby said before about how we actually have our own production staff 
uh, CBU is comprised of four different departments that make up uh, as a whole. So we have a production staff, we have a hospitality staff, uh, we have a marketing and PR staff, as well as a programming staff. Um, so coming in, I got to work in our hospitality department and working my first event for CBU uh, was a concert. Uh, and I mean, like Abby said, it was just incredible. I mean, I got to see everything in the works, everything happen. You know, people who go to like, I've been to concerts before and you get to see the actual event and seeing what happens behind the scenes too. And just how involved we are and how we make such a cool thing. I mean, it was packed. I'm pretty sure we, we had a concert at the Woolbury. It was the Woolbury and I, I know you just see everything come to life and it was incredible. And then going off of that, probably one of my favorite experiences ever is I worked uh, a Winter Wonderland event. And Winter Wonderland is one of our big Landis events. And we had a programmer um, uh, who put on this event. And you just saw like tons of people just congregate to Landis to have a great time, to enjoy events. Food trucks were there. Rides were there. Games were there. We had, you know, different people come out to, you know, you know, have people have a great time. Uh, it was just something that was awesome to be a part of awesome to witness. Um, so every time we have an event, it's just, you know, it's great. That's great. You guys kind of answered my next question, which was what's the most memorable show you've seen, or at least I feel like Daniel did. Abby probably has another one, but let's start with Christina. What's the most memorable show you've seen, uh, on campus, either at club down under or elsewhere. I know you guys do some events, Right now you're doing them at a local restaurant slash bar called the Wilbury since the club is closed. But I know also hold some of the bigger concerts at another, another local venue called the moon. So kind of club down under is kind of everywhere, even when club down under doesn't exist. <laughs> right. Well, I guess I could pick from a plethora of experiences. I have my undergraduate experience, regret experience and my current job. So I've been able to see a lot of amazing shows put on through club down under. Um, but if I could pick last year, I would probably say, one of the best shows I saw just because of the energy was the band Camino, which is what I think that's what they're called. I'm really bad at the band name sometimes, by the way, but they were amazing because I had, it had been a while since I had seen a sold out show. Um, just because, you know, it's sometimes hard to pull folks into a show, but the energy and the line going outside the door and just seeing all like we, I usually stand in the back as an advisor when I would go to a show or an event. And just standing in the back corner watching all these students and people in town that a lot of those folks typically don't even come to Club Down Under shows, just to see the diversity of everybody there and having so much fun, just the jumping up and down. And then every time they were like, oh, we're going to play this next song and everybody would freak out the first, you know, two, three notes of the song type of thing. I just I love being in that atmosphere and being in that vibe. And so I think for me, any show where students or patrons are having a great time and you can see on their faces how happy they are and they're like mouthing the words and people who come to really early and smush to the front I just I think every show that's like that is a good show but I think that was one of my favorites from last year and then in undergrad I would say um we got I got to see um of Montreal on Halloween and they dressed up and it was at the moon of course because that was way back and it was a fantastic show. They carried him out on like this gilded platform thing, the lead singer. And it was, you know, everything you would think of above Montreal, who is a great local um, band folks in town know about them a lot, but uh, glitter, glamour, all those things rolled into one. And I just have a, a wonderful experience from that show as well. I mean, it's funny you mentioned of Montreal. It feels like they were playing on campus, like, every couple of months back when I was an undergrad. Oh, they still do. <laughs> yeah, they're like a staple. I was going to say, we try to book them at least once a year regardless. Yeah. Um, I would say my favorite show last year was a combination of shows, which is our last call for fall. And it, we had Sandy Alex G, who now goes by Alex G. And I think that what I enjoyed most about that particular show was that it poured rain towards his entire, throughout his entire set. And me and my friend group didn't crowd with people. We kind of went off into the court, uh, into the grass, like open area. And we were just dancing in the rain. And it was like one of the most freeing, fun, 
fun experiences. And I love Last Call for Fall. We bring really, really great bands during that event. So um, yeah, that was a great memory of last year. And I was a volunteer or um, in the process of uh, being a volunteer. So there was a lot of like anticipation around attending event that I was like, oh, one day I'm going to be a part of this. What about you, Daniel? Do you have another? I'm, I'm sure we all have like dozens of these. So. So I actually have um, I have I have one event that I it it, it it stays with me for a while because it was one of the first events that I worked. It was the Lemon Twigs. And basically, when you're working at the Woolbury, I was working back door. And my job was to not let people under 21 leave through that door, you know, or people to leave with any drinks in their hands. And but like, you know, I had some power because I was, you know, I was working the back door like, you know, hey, you can't leave this place, uh, you know, got to get through me. And everybody in the Lemon Twigs was dressing, you know, kind of outlandish. And uh, this one guy was wearing these slacks and a button up shirt and a tie. And this guy's holding a beer in his hand and he's about to leave. And I say, hey, by the way, um, you can't leave uh, this place with a drink in your hand. You know, just letting you know, those are the rules. And he goes, okay, well, can I just leave this here? And I was like, yeah, sure. That's fine. And so he leaves and so do the Lemon Twigs and they're all waiting outside and I'm acting all tough. And the lemon twigs walk back in and they're about to go up and the crowd's like, ah, they're going crazy. And the guy walks in right behind them. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. And he grabs his drink, goes, ah, oh, thanks buddy. And he walks up on stage and he goes down to sit at the piano. And I'm like, I just, I just tried to boss around the piano. The keyboard is uh, the guy who plays the keyboard for the lemon twigs. Good going, Daniel. Way to, way to be smooth. But, um, they put on a great show and you know, it was, it was, <laughs> it was just really funny. I got to laugh at myself. Like, you know, you get to really interact with these people too. Sometimes, uh, you know, I, one of, one of my favorite events too, is just last year, I love our lecture series. Uh, so we got Karamo Brown to come in and do a show and just to like, you know, be in the room with that guy, you know, the energy he put out, you know, the, the lecture that he gave, it was great. You get to, you know, you all took a picture with him. It was a great time. So just interacting with the talent as well, you know, it's something that not a lot of people get to do. And being part of Club Down Under, it, it really gives you cool opportunities. I will, I will chime in with my own favorite um, Club Down Under concert story. I want to say this was 2002, but it might have been, no, 2003, but it might have been a little later. Um, there was this big, like, multi-campus tour of, like, four bands that were going around. They're just, it's just this tour, and they're just hitting college campuses, and they're, they're set up on, like, supposed to be set up on outdoor stages, and, like, kind of like a last call before fall kind of situation where you bring in a big band. Um, we were, Florida state was the last stop on the tour and it was absolutely pouring rain, like just pouring rain to the point where the whole thing had to be canceled. Um, but one of the bands, only one of the bands, the other three just skipped out and they were like, that's it. It's the last day of the tour. We're done. I don't remember what those bands were. The fourth band was Andrew WK. And, um, he said, no, we're going to do the show. Where can we do the show? And I guess club down under was supposed to have a pajama party that night. So Andrew WK played the pajama party. Uh, it was awesome. It was the craziest rock show I've ever seen in my life because of how small that venue is. Like this band is supposed to be here on like a huge outdoor stage with like a couple hundred students showing up to see it instead is crammed into club down under. And um, I probably shouldn't mention this, but <laughs> the building um, does not exist anymore. So I feel like it's safe. Uh, club down under has kind of almost famous for having a balcony. It's this two tiered setup. Um, and the balcony hangs right over the pit where everyone is standing. So Andrew WK is up on stage. There are way too many people inside club down under, and they are just jumping off the balcony into the mosh pit while they're playing all their songs. And it was definitely like one of the coolest concerts experience of my entire life. And I've seen like, I've seen a lot of concerts, but that one really stood out. And I think it just kind of speaks to like the kind of magic that can happen when a school can bring in these huge acts and have them play in such a small venue. Yeah, it's incredible. It's, it's awesome. I completely agree. I had a similar experience at a Matt and Kim show. It was like, Oh, I was at that show. Me too. And we were, I was up on the balcony <laughs> thing and I was just like, you were, I don't know. It was hot. It was like yeah. so many people and we're all, you know, show sweaty and they're sweaty and they're like, you know, and they pick, they fit all of their gear on stage with all the lights and everything. And that show was really, really cool too. But I remember that one as being like a sold out pack one. That one was really rad. And I do remember that Andrew WK show. That was epic. I think that's probably why we had to kind of make rules about crowd surfing and stuff because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit of a, a real moment, but people, a lot of artists, did like climbing up on that that 
like landing a, a lot of the time, which was always yeah. a little bit nerve wracking, but cool at the same time. <laughs> and then I just remember Andrew WK stayed outside after the show. The rain had stopped and he just stayed outside after the show and until like 1 a.m. talking to everybody who wanted to talk to him. Yeah, like, man, this is so cool. I love this place. Mm -hmm. uh, OK. So speaking of like these kind of huge bands, Matt and Kim, Andrew WK, Hippocampus, all coming through campus, <laughs> no, Hippocampus coming through campus. Um, how do you guys book acts? Because I know like Tallahassee isn't, it, you know, it's, it's kind of a remote location. So how do you guys manage to get all these great acts to come? Um, well, what, what we really try to do is we build some really solid relationships with agents. Thankfully, uh, we have an actual concert talent buyer. So what a lot of institutions, they're not fortunate enough to have a student or staff member that knows much about the music industry or has a background in it. Um, so they typically reach out to what are called middle agents and those agents reach out to, uh, a, uh, talent agencies on behalf of universities to ask for concerts, comedy lectures, but um, Florida state and club down under likes to have our students. We really do take the four students by students very seriously. So um, our concert talent buyer will reach out to agencies that we've built relationships over the years. What we try to do to keep the cost down is we'll try to book um, acts that are on their way to uh, like in the Southeast. So typically like if they're going to play a show in Atlanta or if they're going to play a show in New Orleans or somewhere in our regional area, we try to have them like maybe make a pit stop on their way to Atlanta in Tallahassee. Because thankfully we are at the top, unlike some other markets like Orlando or Miami, where some bands are like, we have to drive all the way down and all the way back up again. So sometimes we'll catch them on that type of tour as well, where they're going down Florida and back up again. So we'll catch them that way. So that's one way we try to book shows. So we get some really awesome acts by just saying like, Hey, we noticed that you are coming through our side of the country. Would you mind making a stop? And so we'll even look like even after a, a schedule is released, we'll look to see if we can fit ourselves on there and just reach out and ask. Um, but it's been a combination of luck and working really hard with agents and building those relationships with folks that we can have some really cool concerts. So I know Union Productions does a lot. Um, you know, you guys do a lot on your own, but you also partner with other campus organizations. What's that process like? How do other campus organizations get involved and what are some of the things you've been able to do because of that? So we put on a plethora of events with other students. Last year, we started a passport series where we were partnering with different student unions and putting on cultural events that um, kind of uh, shed a, a light or give lens to um, foods and music from different cultures, um, all compiled into this really neat event. Um, we've done um, drag shows with uh, partnered with the Pride Student Union. Um, um, basically the departments, um, have a PR department has an outreach, uh, uh, staff member that one of their roles and jobs is to reach out to different departments. And so, um, and, I, and I've found that, um, from my experience as a, as a student going to these events that the, both organizations love working with club down under because it really does give them an outlet to um, have a lot of resources to put on a fabulous event and also to, we have a large following. So, um, a lot of students who will frequent CDU events will find out through these org these organizations through us. So a lot of these organizations we partner with find it really beneficial to put on the events, uh, collaboratively. Yeah. I, I, I want to echo that too. I mean, I, I think one of the best things about CDU is that we get to work with so many different organizations um, throughout FSU. Like Abby said, our passport series, our drag shows. I mean, listen, our drag shows get so much, like it's such a large audience. I have to go out and tell people, I'm sorry, but we're, we're packed. Like, <laughs> um, you know, and different things like that. And something that I, you know, personally hope to continue more is to reach out to even more organizations. Um, you know, we have a great student body. We have great staff, uh, employees here at CDU that we just love putting on events. We love working with different organizations too and uh, getting them out there as well. So uh, it's, it, it's always fun. It's always fun to work with different organizations. Um, so obviously we've mentioned, um, you know, some of these, the big, like, um, like pouring acts, like uh, a lot of musical acts, you guys bring in a lot of comedy. I know, uh, are there any stand up comedians that you guys have been particularly like uh, happy to see or that you've been able to bring to campus? 
So one of the comedians that we brought was Mary Beth Barone. And one of my good friends had an opportunity to open for her. And uh, the real cool thing about that show was that I had brought a friend to who was visiting me from um, from another university, and uh, he was he noticed that he, that he had recognized her stand up bit and was like, I saw her on like Kimmel or some other um, like night show, uh, Tonight Show type of thing. So um, it was cool that we were able to like bring faces that student recognizes and also provide opportunity for students like my friend who can open up for these acts that are touring um we also club down under puts on our own stand-up comedy nights where we give an outlet and a stage for um students who do stand-up and other uh performative things we give them an opportunity to do their own um performances and we get a great um turnout for those events yeah i wanted to add abby didn't don't you also because i remember uh shooting uh taking photos for this Zainab Johnson. Yes, uh, she was. I had another friend. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. We have students opening up for these big people. It's, it's great. Yeah. And Zainab was fabulous. So she was so sweet. We got to meet her after the show and take pictures and she was just so friendly and cracking jokes even after her set was done, which is always fun. Um, yeah. My favorite comedy show is from like way, way back in the day. But um, it was when we had the club and I was in undergrad or graduate school. I can't remember, but it was called like the Axe Comedy Tour. And it was Whitney Cummings, uh, Nick Kroll, uh, (laughs) um, Donald Glover, um, and one other person. I can't remember. Two, it was two women and two men, but I can't remember like who the other woman was. Um, But it, it was just you know, like, yeah, you, you're just like, holy cow, all those people on one ticket. And I saw them all at the club and I didn't know who Donald Glover was. So like I'm standing in the back, you know, where the poles used to be in the back of the club. And I'm just standing there and he's just leaning against one. And I'm just like, you were just on stage, but I didn't know who he was. And now I like super regret never like getting a picture with him or asking for his autograph. So I think that's something else that's really cool about club down under just be it comedy concerts, whatever. Like sometimes we get to see people at the very beginning of their career and which there's probably tons of people out there that can tell stories about how they got to see some really big acts at club down under, which we talked about earlier that you get to see these acts in in this intimate setting, but even before they're big, you get to see them and you're just like, you never know. So I would like, you just always go to stuff because you never know what's, who's going to be the next big thing. So I think that's always really cool about club down under stuff in general. Yeah. It's so cool. I think I was at that same show and then isn't it, isn't it great? Something like 10 or 12 years, Donald Glover came back playing the civic center as childish Cambino and like, yes, tons and thousands of people showed up for that. That was so yes. cool. That was a really cool one. That was a good show. <laughs> um, let's see, let's move on. So I know it's kind of speak, let's transition to um, the civic center. You guys put on one huge event there every year. It's our homecoming event called Pow Wow. What is that like? Cause that's like a, that's one of the biggest pep rallies basically like in America, you're bringing in like a, a like a huge comedian, like a really top tier comedian every year and all this other, like the circus is there, the dance crews are there, like everyone is going on. What does it take to put a massive event like that on? Um, well, we, uh, we used to have a super, super hand in homecoming, but, uh, when we had back in the day, it, it's usually reaching out. We start really early. Like the biggest thing we have to wait on is the football schedule. So we're waiting to know what day homecoming is. And then the minute we find out the day homecoming is we start reaching out we, there's an entertainment chair. That's not the actual proper title, but there's a student leader part of homecoming who gets to help curate the acts and helps curate the um, also the concert side and the um, comedy side of it all. And so that student um, kind of gauges and sees and reaches out to agents to see like if they're uh, able to be a performer for that night for homecoming. And um, the biggest challenge about that is making sure that if they are a Saturday night live um, talent, that they are not shooting that weekend. That has been a signature thing that happens when you're booking a homecoming event is that it's on that Friday typically. So we have to make sure that we book talent that's not typically on Saturday Night Live because they have a very packed schedule. But um, it's working with a committee of students trying to figure out what they want, um, what's available, who's really popular, 
Um, we've been lucky. It took a long time to get female comedians. I'm glad we've been able to have more and more female comedians. I hope to, our next thing will be a female performer for our concerts uh, series for that. But um, I think it just takes a lot of organizing back and forth, working with the athletics, working with the civic center, working with the student committee. We also work with alumni center. Um, so there's just a lot of folks who contribute a lot of hard work and time into creating a really special event for students and alumni. Yeah, I was going to say, I was pretty sure that with homecoming, it's way more collaborative than it is just CDU kind Mm -hmm. of dictating how that one ends out. Yeah, I know you got uh, just a couple of years ago, you had Amy Schumer show up at Pow Wow. And it was like the year that her big HBO stand up special had dropped and Trainwreck had come out. And then like a month and a half later, she was headlining Pow Wow at FSU. And I was just like, how did you even do this? You guys are like so good. We just get really lucky. (laughs) We do. Yeah. And it, it was the same with Nick Kroll. I'm pretty sure that's when bit the year Big Mouth had just gotten a lot of headway. Um, so it, w- it, it was cool that we were able to kind of get these artists in their prime, you know, publicity moment. Yeah. And also last year we got, you know, I mean, just throwing out names. I mean, like Pete Davidson came last year, you know, but mm-hmm. um, I think he actually was on SNL like a day later, which is yeah, kind of, that's, kind that's, of contrary yeah. to what it normally yeah, is. Like Chris, Chris, Christina talking about, you know, SNL, uh, you know, people making sure they're not, you know, record or shooting the day after talk about last year, Pete Davidson coming in, you know, a lot of, a lot of important scheduling that takes place too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. So we've been talking a lot about acts that have come through and kind of the events that you guys do. Um, but I want to know why should students get involved in union productions? You know, we've got a lot of prospective students coming in. So why should they get involved and you know, how can they get involved? Yeah, um, that's a great question. That's an awesome question. A lot of people ask about Club Down Under. They ask me, you know, what's the best decision you've made in college? You know, whenever I go home and I speak to people, I, I tell them Club Down Under. Uh, one word, it's opportunity. I mean, there's so much more to Club Down Under than just being part of a club and doing cool stuff. You get to actually work in a field that you want to be a part of. I mean, we have production staff where we have people that want to be producers for the today show. You know, Abby and I do a podcast together. We love doing podcasts. You know, I, I want to be in advertising. I'm part of a marketing team. You know, you have people that want to coordinate events. They work in our programming board. There's whenever I talk to people or whenever I go to different businesses or, you know, I apply to jobs and I tell them about what I do and the people that I work with they're they full on, I get their full attention because it's like, you're a college student and you're doing all this stuff it's incredible. Um, you know, we're fortunate enough, you know, Abby and I and to be going to a school like FSU where we have such an opportunity because a lot of people don't have, you know, programs like this. So, uh, opportunity is definitely a word that describes what CDU has, has done, at least for me. Yeah. On the other side of the coin, at least for me, I'm a psychology major. So my, my studies don't really have anything to do. And, um, uh, I want to go on to work in nonprofit. So what I do with CDU, although it's not necessarily applied, it's all of the things and skills that I'm gaining also. Um, aside from all the like technical and logistical things that I'm learning through, you know, working in the PR department, I would say the people that I've met is just like the most like salient, uh, salient part of, of that experience for me. It's just, it's so collaborative and such a positive environment where these students, us, the advisors, everyone involved just wants to make the most engaging and fun experience for all the students at FSU, because we, we do it based on our own experience. We know how much we gain from attending these events that we're like, I want all these incoming freshmen, juniors, sophomores, seniors alike to experience, you know, the full breadth that FSU has to offer. And, um, I think CDU is like the pinnacle of most college students FSU experience. I mean, if you're not going to football games or, you know, joining honor societies or involvement with Panhellenic or fraternities, what's there to do on campus? It's club down under. It's really like the, the focal point of most people's college experience. And to be a part of that is like just amazing. It really is. So if, uh, for students who are interested in applying to FSU, they'll be starting next fall. Um, hopefully things will be back to normal by then. How can they get involved? How do they join up? 
Yeah. So earlier in, in our conversation, I talked about um, those interviews and orientations that we have. So in the fall, um, usually given things are normal this year, we're not doing that. Um, and we, we may bring it back in the spring, but we'll keep that posted on our uh, Instagram and other social media platforms. But um, usually in the fall, we hold an orientation sort of info session. Um, and there are a couple of days in like the first two weeks, I think it's in the first week of school. Yeah. The first two weeks of school, like the first week of September, I'm pretty sure. And, um, in those sessions, we go through the rundown of each of those departments. And then you show up to our all call, which is um, a two day session of interviews where you show up and you can interview for all departments, multiple departments, one, two, whatever you feel like uh, is your best fit. I was planning to interview for a bunch of departments, but I went into my PR interview and I walked into the room and just the people I kind of felt, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't need to apply to another department. Like this is the space for me to thrive and and make communities. So, um, yeah. So after that, you have a two day interview session and, um, then we, then we'll send out emails if you, uh, received a volunteer position. So, and then the rest is history because now I'm a staff, (laughs) I'm a staff member. Yeah. You don't have to have any prior experience in music or events so if you're a high school student and you're like I didn't do any of that stuff in high school but you just secretly had a passion for it or maybe you're looking to get into it because it's something that you've gained interest in over the summer um again it's a great opportunity to just start those uh uh interests and things like that that you have so I think yeah it's a great opportunity so I think a lot of students are worried that like they don't have the background um to join club down under CDU um but we welcome everyone. We love new ideas. It's really fun. Some of our uh, students who are part of CDU have like, the least experience, but have the best ideas because they haven't done it before. So I think that's always really valued at CDU. And the amazing thing also about that is that um, you'll enter into this field that we, these departments, and you'll come out of it if you continue coming back and working, or if you end up deciding to pursue being a staff member, you come out it with this sense of expertise in the subject. I never, I, I always loved enjoying engaging in social media and curating a brand and maintaining that um, that aspect of PR, but I never had any type of experience in that. But now I'm, I'm at towards the end of, or the beginning of my senior year. And I feel like I could get a job in that field or like explore an opportunity like that and, and feel like I have enough experience where I could, um, pursue that. I came in my freshman year. Um, I was like, I, I love music. I love my Spotify playlists. Like that was my brand. I was like, I'm going to come into club down under and you know, it, it, you really don't need any experience in anything, just like passion for wanting to like put on fabulous events. Yeah. Yeah. Passion. Passion is definitely like a key word. Um, I mean, just like a quick background. I got, you know, I was, had a great opportunity to produce a theater troupe in high school with some friends of mine. And, uh, after that was over, I mean, I was looking for something to do in college. So I was like, Hey, like, like I said before, like, this is it. So I interviewed and I had no experience in, uh, I mean, social media, I did all the background stuff and the producing. Um, so when it came down to it, it was just like, okay, you know, this kid, he really wants to be part of it. You know, he really wants to work hard for this and make some awesome stuff. Because at the end of the day, that's what we do. We put on awesome events for an awesome student body, and we have a great time doing it. That's great. So I want to look to the future a little bit. Maybe Christina can give us a little um, inside info. Is there anything you can tell us about the new union that's coming and the new Club Down Under? Anything cool about it? Well, um, there's some personal cool things where... uh, (laughs) I, it's going to have a sound booth, which is super exciting because <laughs> back in the day, our production team used to have to drag six by six table, like a, a six foot foldable table out every time to set up a show. So I'm super excited about that part. Um, but it, like I said earlier, it'll be down under uh, in the basement. Um, the projected completion date is fall 2021. So we'll see. Um, now that was 
before the pandemic came along a little bit. So, but best hope is next year. And so I'm really excited and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things to uh, celebrate. It'll be our, um, which birthday is this that we're coming up to? Um, our 80th birthday? Too. 71 um, yeah yeah so we're coming wow. up on our birthday for club down under so it'll be a great year for us to open up and and see the new union so i'm super and excited. i'll have an excuse to come back after i graduate exactly that is the number one <laughs> yeah. thing we hope everybody alumni from cdu and those who just maybe came to our shows will come out and check us out in the fall we'll be really really excited that's great. So I want to move into our, our kind of quick fire lightning round. Uh, the first thing I want to know is what is everyone's favorite thing about Florida State? Um, and I will say you can't say Club Down Under because we know that's the real answer. <laughs> oh, the people I've met. Why do you say the people? <sighs> Club Down Under. <laughs> no, <laughs> it comes back, it comes back. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, I I think like in college, you're in a point of your life. It's your year from in your undergrad, it's 18 to 21, 22. And you are really, it's your prime time to grow as a person and to really figure yourself out and to do that alongside people who are both like-minded, not like-minded. It's just, it, it's a real, it's a real interesting science experiment colleges. I, I, I think like putting all of these 18 to 22 year olds in a really confined environment and say, learn and have fun and, and figure it out and then go off into the world. I think it's really great. And um, all the people I've met that have come and went in my life um, throughout my past four years in college have definitely shaped who I am and helped me kind of decide where I want um, my life to be post-grad. So. Yeah, uh, I, I would agree with Abby in, in a way. Um, I mean, for me, it's 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 the people. Um, at least, I mean, I'm a big sports fan. Uh, I love sports. Uh, so the the first um, time that I got to go to a football game, if you guys are, whoever's listening to this podcast, I'll let you know right now. If you go to Tallahassee, you come to Florida State, football here, college football is a religion. Uh, so <laughs> everybody congregates on Saturday to the temple of Doe Campbell stadium and we watch a football game. And the first time that I went there, I mean, like everybody locked arms. We were all just swaying. It was like in at nighttime, we were all getting so excited. Um, and just, I mean, also sports, it brings people together too. And, you know, like CDU brings people together. So does sports. And then in general, you know, when I walk across, you know, down the street in my hometown, if I see a, like a, a, a person wearing an FSU shirt, or like an FSU hat, you know, we'll kind of, you know, give a point to each other. Like we're, we're just a big family, you know, going to college, going to the same college, it gives a tie to everybody. So when you come here, you know, even though there are 30,000 like undergraduates uh, and the number is huge, it's astronomical. Uh, it, there's still a sense of like family, like we all belong to the same thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite thing are the, the students, the people I get to work with, because you all are amazing. Um, that's always really fascinating and cool to watch people go through their 18 to 22 year old time in life because you all stay the same age and I get older and older as each year goes by. So I learn something new every year. I love that movie. Um, <laughs> I, all right. All right. <laughs> um, but uh, it is a movie. Uh, but I think this is a really random thing, but I think Florida State has some of the best landscaping ever. If you have been to other institutions, uh, not to say that they're ugly, but we have some beautiful landscaping. They take real pride in what, how they make our campus beautiful, the flowers everywhere. Um, even if you you can socially distance and take a really nice walk through campus and just enjoy the trees and the beauty of it all. Um, I just, I think that part of uh, Florida state is really great because it is different from other parts of Florida, especially if you're coming from like central or South Florida, it's very different up here. You're like, there are hills, there are all these giant oak trees and canopy roads to appreciate. So I think like that's something I really enjoy about Florida state is just, it's a really beautiful campus and I enjoy walking around and seeing everybody. That's great. So when you guys need to get lunch, what's your favorite local place around town to, to eat at? Local lunch. Should we do an on campus or no, like off campus, please? Oh, Fa Seven. It's off of Pensacola, um, by um, 
um, off of Pensacola and Osley. I'm plugging it. It's literally one of my favorite places. It's Vietnamese soup. It's comfort food, the noodles, the, the, the little brisket. It's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would say down on West Tennessee, either Mr. Roboto's it's just classic. Um, it's, it's solid food. And then some of the best fried chicken I've had ever. I mean, it makes me feel like a, like a very grown up person. Guthrie's has incredible chicken. Uh, Guthrie's has been on this show, I think, three weeks in a Guthrie's. row now. Yes, I, the I, gut punch it. shall prevail. The gut punch <laughs> shall prevail. Let me tell you now, ladies and gentlemen, it's over. It's over. It's Give them the only crown. good after 2 a.m. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's insane. It's, all the time. it's so good. It's good. Yeah, I used to work at the I used to work at the SLC and, you know, I'd get off at 2 a.m. after a midnight show. And like, where am I? And like, I need to get food before I go home to my apartment. I lived across uh, the street please. from Guthrie's. <laughs> so we ended up like me and my roommate, we both worked at the SLC. So we ended up eating there in the middle of the night, like a million times after work. Everyone who loves Guthrie's or Guthrie's sounds so passionate about it that I don't know if it's concerning or just admirable. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just great. I mean, I don't know. Like. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> over over the <laughs> summer, like uh, this whole like feud between like Popeyes and Chick Fil A, I was like, oh my god. Daniel was, like, was so far detached from it because he was just enjoying his gun through his body. I was like, wait till you try the- some of this. I was like, you're missing out, people. And the sauce, it's the sauce. Don't get me started. <laughs> what about you, Christina? Where do you go for lunch? Well, my fancy side really likes cool beans for lunch. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. If I can swing cool beans for lunch, because that's the best time to go to cool beans is if you're on a budget is for lunch. Uh, I love that place. Um, if not, I like uh, El Cocinero a whole lot, too. Oh, that place is Cocinero. really, really good. I love good tacos. I love tacos anytime. And that's one of my favorite local jams is that taco place. Um, I want to plug something in real quick too. Um, I don't know. It's a quick discovery for anybody who's living on campus, any freshman. uh, There's a place at the stadium called the fig and it is, it's, it's where the athletes go to eat. Um, That's by the bus stop. You're thinking of the grill that's out front of my office, which is (laughs) the fig is in the fig is in building D where it's in the athletics building. Yes. Mm. Yes. It's in the athletics building and it's in, yeah, it's in UCD. And that's where the athletes go to eat and they're open for students at certain points. And it even, you know, like I lived in Jenny Murphy when I was um, a freshman and so did my sister, which was crazy. But basically I would, me and my roommate, uh, Thomas, we would go and we'd walk all across campus just so we could go to eat the fig. It's great food. Uh, if you have a meal plan, it works with your meal plan too. So try it out at least. Trust me, uh, the fig, that's my quick plug. I'm done with the, with yeah. the food. <laughs> it's like the other dining halls, but much smaller, which is yes. great. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then I usually ask another question about like an interesting class, but I got a, I had a really good listener question come in that I want to replace in the lightning round this week. Uh, and they asked if money and the cruel realities of time were no factor, what performing act, you know, musician, comedian, whatever living or dead, would you book for a show? We asked this question in our interviews too, like the, yeah. when when students come to interview for uh, a CDU volunteer position. We asked this question. Who I don't I can't remember what I yeah I can't remember I, what I said. <laughs> well, who would you book now? Hmm. Ooh, who would I book now? That's a good question. Um, there's so many options, so many genres. Um, Especially when you say living and dead, dead or, that I just know. like that really kind of puts me in a I'm weird place. Because it's like, I know I'm thinking oh, Beethoven. I'm thinking <laughs> Beethoven. I'm thinking <laughs> Freddie Mercury. Like I, I'm thinking I, the caveman that invented the first instrument. There you go. <laughs> the first what concert thinking. ever. Right. Let's bring it back. Go vintage. Um, uh, maybe I feel like Michael Jackson would be such a cool, like, oh. just like a full, per, full performative or like the Beatles, like they would all be alive. The Beatles yes. would be probably it. Like I it was back the in the Cavern Club or something. That'd be cool. Yes. That'd be so s- sick. That warms yeah. my heart that you know who the Beatles are. <laughs> I was named after their album. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Beatles. Yeah. 
I stand by it. Oh, you do too, the Beatles? Uh, Beatles or Michael Jackson. I, I love I love Michael Jackson. I, I've been I Michael. love it. It was a collective, it was a group think right now. Yeah. There we go. All right, we'll there move on go. to our CD last you. question. Yeah, CDU group think for the win. Um, so if you guys <laughs> could only give incoming students one piece of advice about like their whole college experience, what would it be? Slow down. Take it all in. Um, I'm a senior now, so I guess I'm getting, I'm going to get a little nostalgic for the listeners, but um, I was just so eager to do so much my freshman year that I kind of got lost in all of the small things and the small interactions. Um, go to so many club down under events. That's one thing I regret not going to some, I did, I had my, you know, hand in going to, you know, some concerts here and there, but go to these events because the people you're going to meet who go to these events are the same kinds of people that are looking to, you know, make community and to hang out and to just like experience fun things. So, um, you'll find your people just slow down, take it all in and go to club down under events. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. That's a great one to slow down. Um, I mean, like, I, I can't even believe I'm a junior in college right now. It's crazy. I remember mm-hmm. moving in. Um, but I mean, if I were to give advice, I, it would probably be, you know, if, if you were like have fun, obviously, but, uh, if you work hard, you know, things work out for the best, uh, in my opinion, at least that's happened to me throughout, throughout my life. Um, you know, I came in, like I said, as a nutrition major, I was pre-med And I was just having a terrible time and then I was working hard and I got into club down under and now I got into my advertising major. I'm in the school of communications and I'm I'm doing what I love. I, you know, having a great time doing it and meeting great people. Um, so try not to stress so much, uh, is I guess what I'm trying to say. So easier said than done too. I'm like saying to slow down, not stress, but my freshman year, I was like, my hair was all over the place. I was, (laughs) yeah. yeah. And you got this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would probably tell students to um, don't be afraid to try. Um, you know, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. There are a lot of people who probably feel the same way you do and are really nervous or hesitant to try or put themselves out there or do something new. But that is like the one of the most exciting thing about about college is it is your opportunity to go and try and do something new and do something outside of yourself or your personality or things that you've ever done in the past and kind of like experiment with what it is you want to do and who you want to be. So just try, uh, put yourself out there and there and someone you will find your place in your community. Like everyone keeps saying there are, everybody wants to be part of something or, and I think that Florida state's a great place for that. And so just try and put yourself out there. Some great advice from Christina, Daniel, and Abby. Uh, thanks so much for being here today, everyone, and go Knowles. Go Knowles. Thanks again to Christina, Daniel, and Abby for their time. If you'd like to learn more about Club Down Under and Union Productions, check out union.fsu.edu slash up. Follow at Club Down Under on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Spotify, and check out the Club Down Under podcast, Dialogue Down Under. If you've been enjoying our show, we'd really appreciate you leaving us a rating, review, or recommendation on Apple Podcasts or in your podcast app of choice. Word of mouth is also a big help to us, so please share the show with any friends or family members who you think may enjoy it. If you have any questions or feedback on the show, please send them to us on social media We are at FSU Admissions on Twitter and Facebook and at FSU.admissions on Instagram. You can also email questions or feedback on the show to admissions at FSU.edu, including the word podcast in the subject line. As always, our theme music is the world-renowned Florida State University Marching Chiefs, recordings courtesy of Mark Records, Clarence, New York, markcustom.com. Just to give our subscribers a heads up, the show will be taking a brief break next week, so there won't be an episode, but we'll be right back to it the week after that. To ensure you get episodes as they're released, don't forget to subscribe to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and go Knowles!